Hey, what's going on everybody? We are here with the 2015 Yamaha R3. This is my review of the bike. This is my first bike and I just want to share with you guys a little bit about my experience and my first year of riding with this thing. Getting to know it, getting to learn riding, um, the maintenance, what it's like to be on two wheels, um, and just share my experience as an individual and review the bike, what I think about it. Um, when I first got on it and how I progressed through it and what I think of it now. I've had the bike for about a year, um, so what are my thoughts a year later after owning the bike? It is a beautiful bike, uh, very well balanced, so let's get on her, let's see what she's all about. Alright, what is going on everybody? We are here, out on the road, beautiful 2015 Yamaha R3. I'm loving this baby right here. a nice beautiful day just going for a relaxed cruise and I've had this bike for just over a year now and I just want to share my opinions with everybody how I feel about the bike when I first got it um, how I progressed over time with it and what I've noticed how I feel about it a year later and you know I love this thing even more than the first day I got it Got some MotoGP action in here. Got that Rossi lifestyle. I remember the first time I took that turn, I was so scared. I was actually riding with someone and it was the first time I ever took that turn. I thought I was Rossi and I was scared for my life. And I took it maybe doing like 30 kilometers an hour, maybe 40 kilometers an hour. Let's uh, change gears here so you guys can hear me and I'm not revving the piss out of this thing. So yeah, 2015 Yamaha R3, this is my first bike and I did a lot of work before, or a lot of research rather, before I got it and which, you know, if you do research properly, it can be a little bit of work so I, I spent days, you know, a few weeks even before I started looking at different bikes did I want to get a 600, a 300 and for me, coming from a car background, I knew that I'm not scared of speed, I'm not scared of going fast and I knew in this case it could be a handicap for me and I said, hey, let's get something that's a little bit more timid I can learn on. And this bike right here has been an amazing experience from the day that I got it, the day that I rode it home. The thing is, when you buy these bikes, they are usually known as beginner bikes, if you will, or entry level bikes. And they are much more than that, which we'll talk about later. But a lot of people that buy them they are young they may be saving up for a while maybe work part-time jobs or in school or who knows maybe working full-time may not have the knowledge about motorcycles the maintenance that they require how to properly maintain it or just maybe because of you know financial situation their hands may be tied um, or a little bit of everything and i noticed that they don't get the same attention as other motorcycles do once you have once you've graduated past your first or maybe second or third motorcycle you can notice as you work your way up through the different motorcycles they tend to get not all of them i mean you know there's always those ones that stand out you always have your outlier and the smaller bikes tend to not be as well maintained as well as they get a little bit more abuse from those that are learning on them whether they're dropped in, in the parking lot or um whether they're learning in the turns, they get a low side, or hopefully not a high, a high side. I, I wish I don't wish that on my worst enemy. So there's, there's these are things to look out for, and there's signs for that, which you know we'll go into one day, hopefully in a later video. But this bike right here, I love it. And if I had to do it again, would I get the R3? Hands down, I would definitely get the R3. I love this bike. It feels great. The weight distribution, everything about this bike feels really nice it's the the key word that i will give this bike and the kind of underlying tone it has is it's very forgiving and it's very progressive so like i don't know where to start with the let's start with what we can look at um the hand controls so when you get on the bike the first thing you're going to notice when you start driving off your the throttle and the throttle is quite linear. A lot of people end up upgrading it to an R6. It's got a little bit less roll to it, if you will. So this one, to get it to full open throttle, you kind of have to bend your wrist back quite a bit. I'm not going to do it now, but there's traffic in front of me, but I'll do a little bit later. 
but it, it's a little bit forgiving which for me I really liked as a new rider when you're in a turn and even in a parking lot or just going through traffic or you hit a bump you know and you might get a little jerk going there from hitting the throttle on a lot of the larger bikes that have um, more power they you know you feel it if you hit a bump you know and you twist the throttle with that much power you will go forward maybe even you know fly back and buck yourself off the bike for someone who's learning how to ride and being progressive again i can't stress that word enough this is a very progressive bike it's for me it was very confidence inspiring and just in front of the the throttle here we have the the front brake it has a decent front brake on it so on this bike we've actually upgraded to stainless steel braided lines one great benefit of that is that when you're squeezing the brakes and you're out there or if you want to get a little bit spirited if you have to slam on the brake the brake lines are normally made of rubber the rubber hoses and what happens is when you slam the brakes or you squish the brakes or over time they start to either stretch or if you give instant brake and you just squeeze them right away they actually start to swell because they're elastic the rubber will will swell and give a little bit which you're not also, you're not always going to be getting constant braking but aside from that when you're learning and even as you grow um, that's kind of something I did later on when I started to get a little bit more confident I did a little bit more sporty riding hitting the twisties and stuff like that so I made that upgrade for me it was really nice I hadn't really noticed the brakes but I did some research and I noticed that that's something that can help the bike be a little bit more reliable as well as the brakes you want something that's reliable something that you can know that when you give it input you're gonna constantly get the same output so I made that upgrade and not that it wasn't constant before I just wanted that guarantee and that safety zone for myself it's not necessarily a must not everybody has to do it I wouldn't say you know go out and do it right away but as you progress it's definitely something you see a lot of people on the track or that do spirited riding as well as a lot of the high-end bikes already come out of the factory with them so that's the brakes the, it's, it's a one-sided on the front it's uh it has one single disc and it's not too much stopping power like if I slam on the brakes I'm not gonna do an endo or a nosedive and we've got a detour going on here so I don't think anybody knows where they're going hence everybody's in the straight lane trying to make a left-hand turn so oh, we got a stop sign here as well so yeah it's got the front brake and the front brake is very progressive it's got the one rotor on the one side so if I were to go and slam on the brake itself it's not going to be too twitchy or if I suddenly have to press the brakes in an emergency I'm not gonna end up nose diving and doing a front flip over the bike definitely don't want to do that it's definitely not fun the next on the other side we have the clutch and the clutch is actually quite smooth on this bike I I can't complain about it I have no complaints whatsoever you can it's not an adjustable clutch nor is the brakes on this hence it's an entry-level bike so you're not getting a lot of adjustability um, but that helps with affordability as well the clutch is actually really nice it's buttery smooth very soft as a new rider I mean you're not gonna be hitting the track you're not gonna be you don't need that heavy engagement of the clutch I mean it only has 321 cc's so I mean it's not a power monster it doesn't necessarily need a, a stiff clutch and I definitely have to say that sitting in traffic in moments like this, especially when you go downtown, you know, when you're commuting or you're going around and learning, your hands don't get sore from constantly grabbing the clutch, like sitting at the light here, I'm just holding the clutch, or at the stop sign rather, I'm just holding the clutch. And you'll see as the next few lights, it's something that you kind of constantly do when you're going at a slow speed or you're stuck in traffic I mean you don't go out on a ride to sit in traffic but let's be real sometimes it does happen you know you have these cagers people are going places long weekend getting a thumbs up for the bike get a lot of love on this thing I do have to say everywhere I go even though it is just an R3 most people can't even tell I mean the bike looks fast just sitting there and it has such aggressive lines and style and just looking at the bike it looks like it's going 100 miles an hour just sitting there um, but yeah the clutch is buttery smooth definitely no complaints about the clutch I haven't had to replace it have no issues however on the other side of the clutch we have the and you got to keep an eye out for these guys you never know I always keep something on the clutch you gotta always keep a few fingers on the clutch and I'm always covering my brake usually especially when when you're in areas like this you never know who's gonna be flying around and who's doing what so the on the other side of the clutch we have the transmission so 
this bike, uh, this is a 2015. They pretty much were the same from 2015 till about, I would say 2018. In 2019, they made some changes to the bike. You'll notice when you're looking at it, it definitely looks different compared to this bike. The triple clamp here is different as well as the fenders are different. So the bike looks the same for the from 2015, their first year making it up until about 2018. The bike looks identical. They didn't change anything mechanically. They didn't make any big differences. So if you're looking to get the bike, there's no major changes. They've made, there was two recalls on this bike before I bought it everything was done so that's definitely something to keep an eye out for if you're looking for one of these bikes make sure that the recalls were done um, on any bike that you buy you can look at the VIN number and you call your local dealership so in this case it would be a Yamaha dealer there's a few of them in the city and just call one of them up talk to their service department and what up Harley crew at the cruisers rolling through the town and yeah, take your VIN number off the bike. It should be, this one is here on the side. They're somewhere usually on the frame or it would be in the owner's manual or I'm still driving with my turn signal on like a smart guy. And uh, take the VIN number, they'll run it through the system and they can tell you if the recalls have been done. It's no cost to you and you just take it in. I mean, it does take a little bit of your time and if there's anything else you want to do to the bike, let's say it needs a new tires or, you know, a new clutch or there's something that you want to change, maybe do the brakes, uh, change the fluid, the pads, that's definitely a good time to do it because when the bike's up on the stand, it's a great time, one, for your personal time, you're not making multiple chips to the garage, but on top of that, you might be able to get some of that work that you want to get done if it's a nice mechanic or in a really nice place and they want to provide good customer service say hey you know they might give you a little bit of break in terms of price while you're getting the warranty warranty work done rather keep an eye out for that those recalls and some of those things it could be something as small as a bolt or a fairing or a light issue or it could be something as serious as you know like an oil pump I mean, if an oil pump goes and you're not pumping oil in the engine, bye-bye motor, boom, you have a grenade, and there goes your engine, right? Especially on a newer bike. So they made that recall a year or two in. So I believe from 2017 on, and they changed that. So they made those corrections to the bike, but the bikes made before that, they're usually, when they make the recall, usually according to a VIN. Um, but other than that, the brakes are really nice. The clutch is nice. The throttle is really nice. The next thing i want to talk about on this thing is the suspension there's no adjustability on it on the front you can change the weight of the fork oil inside i don't recommend doing that right off the bat years down the road once you're a little bit more experienced or if you're a heavier person that's definitely an option you can also change the spring rate so you can change the spring itself so there's a liquid in here and there's also a spring and they work in conjunction for the rebounding and the compression. And in the rear, the rear shock is a mono shock. It looks a lot like a coilover, if you will. If you guys are familiar with car suspensions, it looks a lot like a coilover. You can change the preset on that, which doesn't do much. It helps a little bit. If you're a little bit heavier or you're a lighter person, you can play with that a little bit. That's something that I changed when I first got the bike. I didn't really notice, but again, as you grow with the bike, like the bike is progressive and as is you as a rider, you're progressive. So you're gonna be more confident on the bike. You're gonna be learning how to take speed or turns rather at speed. Like that first turn that I took in this video, if it doesn't get edited out, got some Moto GP action in here. Got that Rossi lifestyle. You know, when I first took that, I was scared. I wasn't aware. My buddy was flying in front of me, and I, you know, I didn't want to ride this, his speed. He's experienced. He had a few years on bikes, so he was very confident. And I'm not about to go chasing him and, you know, veer off into the ditch or low side or what have you, right? I always ride my own ride, which is what I highly advise. So yeah, the suspension, it's very nice when you're going through town, even here you have a few bumps, you have a few potholes in the city, it can be killer depending where you are, I know some cities are horrible, uh, there's a few in my local area that are just brutal, I feel like I'm off-roading, like I should be riding a dirt bike at times when I go down to certain particular streets, and this one's pretty comfortable, I see a lot of my friends on their sport bikes and you know, their super sports, they're dying when they hit bumps you can see them shaking and just really you know hoping that it's over real quick this thing's really smooth it's really nice it's not too stiff it's not 
like you're you know riding in a Cadillac or like an old car where it's super bouncy or just too soft so it's in between I feel like at points this bike was designed for people that weigh 150 pounds by people that weigh 150 pounds so with me with gear on I mean if I weigh 220 pounds and I have a backpack and all my gear on I could end up weighing close to 250 pounds so that's a hundred pound more than that's made than this thing was designed I feel anyways to carry so I mean that's noticeable that's one thing that something that I would keep in mind is if you're a heavier rider um, you can change the spring rate you can change the weight of the fork oil you can change a lot of things so I mean those are options but I mean who wants to buy a bike to start doing changes but I would say if you're in around 180 pounds and less you'll have no issues with this bike even me at 220 pounds I've had a lot of fun in it the only issue or the only gripe that I'll have is on this bad boy when I'm coming out of a turn and I'm doing some really aggressive riding I do feel when I hit the throttle and the bike starts to come back up and I progressively give throttle I do feel a little bit of a sag up until I got to that point and I got more aggressive on the bike I was really surprised yellow light I was really confident on it but it got to a point where as I moved forward and progressed I really had to say hey let's take a step back and you know then I started adjusting the preset and that made a big difference on the rear shock once I set the preset and um, to a little bit stiffer so now I have it at the second last click and it is a little bit more noticeable it's not as bad and as I'm talking to you guys you can't see it but my visor is fogging right up and what else should I talk about this bike? I mean, I love this little thing. This thing's great. I feel like there's so much technology that once you do the research on this and you look at, you know, MotoGP, the Yamaha R1, which is their pinnacle. And for those of you who may not know about motorcycle racing, the Yamaha R1, they have the R1M. So MotoGP is the, I mean, those aren't race bikes. Those are factory versions of their MotoGP bikes. I mean, they have the best technology and it trickles down. Just like in F1, a lot of their technology will trickle down like Mercedes, Ferrari, a lot of their their engineering like they spend so look at that old school Benz a lot of their money in research and development goes into Formula One so why wouldn't they tr have it trickle down and trickle over to some of their road bikes or some of their production bikes and depending on some smaller uh, race series like SBK or what have you they really they need to homologate it which means they need to have some of those bikes have some of that technology and they need to produce them and have consumers or customers like me and you buy them and one thing that was definitely not that I, I want to mention now is it just came into my mind one thing that's definitely not MotoGP inspired or any kind of sport inspired is the tires on this thing I mean Yamaha meant well when they made the R3 so these things came with bias ply tires now bias ply tires is the technology that was used many many moons ago when they first started making cars and car tires they were using bias ply tires and i encourage you to go do some research on the difference between bias ply tires and what most new cars or new motorcycles have now those are radial tires so it's the construction of the tire and essentially what holds it together and what gives it its structural strength so the bias ply tire is known you'll see it on a lot of cruisers it's uh, known to have a better fuel or not a better fuel economy but a, a better mileage and they last a little bit longer so you'll get significantly longer lifespan of the tire you can travel a lot greater distance with a bias ply tire than you could with a radial tire however the radial tire is a much better all-around performing tire than the bias ply tire I'm just hitting red light after red light here but I guess that's what you get when you go through these small little towns but we're in a rush today we're just cruising talking about this bad boy going for a nice Sunday cruise and I changed these tires out so they came with the Michelin Pilot streets or sports and I upgraded them to the Bridgestone Battleax S20 Evos so big difference in the tires I noticed right away as soon as I started getting into turns and 
just driving around town it, I felt much more confident much more sticky rubber when you're leaned over in a turn it felt like night and day way more confident I had way more grip and you know when you have more grip when you feel more confident that all boils down to safety it all comes full circle when the bike is better performing when the bike has better quality parts on it that performance does go hand in hand with safety because if you are in some kind of emergency something happens if my tires don't have grip any input that I have isn't going to be able to do much for me you know I feel like it there's somewhat there's some kind of correlation between performance and safety I mean usually when you do have performance you're going faster so I mean it's it's all in in perspective depending on the rider and how you're treating the bike how you're riding the bike and you know the, the amount of skill and knowledge you have for each individual moment for each individual rider as we can see here you never know what's going to happen out here. You always got to be one step ahead of everybody. You always got to be awake and keep an eye out on these cagers. Most of them are on their phone. God knows what they're doing. Doing their makeup, picking their nose. Who knows really, right? So, nothing bad to say about the bike, really. The engine is great. One thing that surprised me that I actually recently learned is, so this motor is a parallel twin. So if you think of like a Honda inline four, if you were cut that in half, that's essentially what this motor is. So it's just instead of that four cylinder or like a, a 600 cc bike would have, a lot of them have inline fours. You just cut that in half and you have the parallel twin, which is an amazing little motor. This thing right here has a lot of bottom end torque as the parallel twins are really, that's what they're really known for is the bottom end torque. And believe it or not, this thing actually has a 180 degree crank which is what the Yamaha R1 again that's that Moto GP the the boss hoss the number one gunner if you will the big boy big daddy of Yamaha bikes the 1000 cc is really known for the sound that it makes and what produces that is the, the 180 degree crank to have that trickle down into this little bike into this 300 cc segment if you will a 321 cc bike you know Yamaha's doing something right there and it sounds really nice I mean it's not horrifically loud I haven't done anything to the exhausts I don't want to annoy my neighbors when I'm going around town yeah it's nice to be heard and loud pipes save lives to each their own and for me I like to not have the entire world hear me as I'm going by I kind of like to get in get out and do what I need to do but I'll be a little bit more noise wouldn't be a bad thing I wouldn't say no to that but this thing's nice and quiet it has a nice little torque range 5,000 rpm to 7,000 rpm is usually where I cruise on this thing it's a nice in between it's not sputtering along like now I'm just I'm a little bit lower than 5,000 right now she's actually cruising really nice um, depending on who's around me now I'm in third gear going like 45 kilometers an hour ish and I'm in about 5,000 just over 5,000 rpm and she doesn't sputter she's really nice and if I want to give it you know she's got a nice little torque band there so that's where I like to cruise when I'm in the city I can feel the torque if I just twist the wrist to, you know really feel the torque and sometimes I'll just be cruising along and just give her a nice little twist to the wrist just to feel that torque what it's about and I really love this thing I really don't know what else to talk about this bike like I really love this bike if I again if I had to do everything from day one all over again on this same here bike I would definitely grab this bike for me being a little bit taller it fits me like that where the tank is here it fits me a lot better I sat on the ninja the 300 the 400 the pegs on the on the Kawasaki are a little bit higher up the rear pegs which for me I didn't like a, the knee was bent my knees rather the knee my knees the knee bent at the knee my knees were too bent and I didn't like it it's very similar to if you want to call it a super a super sport vibe but I mean I don't want to take that risk with my first bike I also want it to be comfortable so in my next review one thing I want to show you guys is uh, next time I have to go on the highway I'm gonna record it and just to talk about what this thing is like on the highway and give you guys an idea of what it's like to ride something that is this size on the highway I mean it's really hard when you're sitting there watching YouTube video you can't go out and test drive all the bikes and see what's available but just so you guys have an idea of what it's like to be on you know a 300cc on the highway 
So yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. I would love your comments. I would love to hear what you guys think, what your opinions are, you know, the stories of your first bike, how you got it, or what you've gone through to get to where you are today in watching this video. Everyone has a unique story. There's always, always great stuff happening. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Subscribe now! Just sharing my journey on two wheels and my bike life, my experience, and... You know, hopefully learn. We learn from it as a community. Great discussion and learning from each other what to do, what not to do. That was a crazy detour. So yeah, we're going to end it on this detour. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. We can learn from each other. We can grow together to become, you know, better individuals, stronger individuals. Keep that money in our bank and enjoy more of our time on the road and less in the mechanic shop or in the garage. Doing, doing repairs and what we have to. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm gonna do a burnout. It says it's recording, but I don't really know if it's recording. I think I made a boo-boo there. All right, boo-boos for life. Boo-boos for life. Who made a boo-boo? You made a boo-boo? I made a boo-boo. Boo-boo.